Just as the display features of objects are controlled by layers, dimension styles control the display features of dimensions. Dim styles also control various dimension settings. There are over 300 settings and system variables for dimensions. We won't touch all of them, thank goodness, but there are a lot that we will touch. Styles help you control and manage these dimensions. Let's open up the dimension example file again. Go to the Styles tab. That's right down here. Several dimensions here are using different styles. You can see that some of them have tick marks, some of them have smaller arrowheads, others are larger. Some text is large and red, others are green, there are no extension lines, etc. It's easy to change the style of a dimension. Just select the dimension and open up the properties panel. Mine's already open, but you can press Control 1 to toggle it on or off. When you come here, you can see a lot of the different properties of the dimension. It tells you the dimension type. This is a rotated dimension, which is just one of your linear dimensions. It gives you the general settings, just like any other object, your color, your layer, your line type, etc. The miscellaneous section here tells you if it's annotative or not, or if it's of what particular dimension style or dim style. Pick in the box, and you'll see an arrow come up. You can pick the arrow again to get a list of possible dimension styles that are in your file. As you move across the list and highlight one without clicking, you get a preview of your dimension of what it's going to look like if you pick that style. Watch over here on my right. If we go to bold, that's what it looks like. Civil, which is the one we currently have set. No extensions, standard, or tick. You can tell that the civil is the one we have set because it shows the grips. So find the one you want and select it. And that's how you change the style. Very simple, very easy. If the dimension has been exploded, for example, like this one here, all it is is a bunch of lines. Piece of text. And in this case, a block for the tick mark. The dimension style no longer has any effect on this whatsoever. So I can't update it, not as easily as I can all of these. You see, I can select multiple dimension objects, and go to the dimension style, and update all of them to bold. That's why you use associative dimensions that we talked about in the last section. Once exploded, it's just a line. I can't do anything with it. If you go to the annotate tab on the ribbon, You'll see here that you have all of your annotation tools, text, dimensions, leaders, tables, markups, and annotation scales. The dimension panel is very similar to the annotate panel, except here it also has text in your dimensions, your leaders, etc. You have more tools available to you here, and we'll go over these in another section. But here you can click and this will activate your dimension style. Right now we're set to civil. If we switch it to bold, any dimension that we create now will be used or drawn in the bold dimension style. So if we click here and activate the civil style and we dimension, you'll see that your dimension, dimensioning the exact same line, but the style looks different. We can change it again and dimension it one more time and it looks different yet again. So that's what styles will do for you. Now controlling them can be a bit tricky and a bit extensive so we'll break it down and look at a few things here and there. But the styles are changed and created in the dimension style manager which you can get to by clicking on this little arrow. All of these annotation tools have this feature. This is the dimension style manager. Here we have a list of the different dimension styles in our file, and you get a little preview. When you select one, you kind of see what it is. It has a description, tells you a little bit about it, why it's different, why it's unique, and here you can make some modifications to it, create a new one, etc. 
you can set one to current here as well. And it tells you right here what your current dimension style is. It's civil. If we want to change any of these, we click on the modify button once we've selected the style we want to change. And you can see here there are several different tabs. And each tab has a lot of different settings. The nice thing is though you get a little preview of what it's going to look like. The lines tab controls the way our dimension lines are displayed or if they're even displayed at all. You can set it to a specific color, and I suggest you use either by block or by layer. Same thing with the line type or the line weight. These settings here will override anything that is controlled by your layer. So if your layer is set to a color of uh, green, but you want it to be red, regardless of the layer settings, you can set it that way, and it shows here. You can do the same thing with your line type. You can make it hidden and you can change the line weight, making it very thick or very thin. Now you have baseline spacing, which controls how far the dimension is away from the baseline. Now, I'm not gonna go in detail of every little setting here because you really don't need to know everything right now, but you can always go through these and play with the settings. Now you can suppress your baselines or your dimension line, and it's done in halves. Why? I'm not really sure. I've always had to draw all of it. But there are times when you want to have a little dimension that looks like this, and you don't want to show the other side. So that's a special case. When it's okay to make a special case dimension style, that's why we have them. Now if we look at the text, you're gonna find out that the lines, symbols and arrows, and text, will be the three main tabs where you'll make changes at. Now your text style works similarly to the lines. You can pick your style of text, and text objects will have styles just like the dimensions have styles. And we'll talk about text styles in another section. But if you want, you can change that. You can set up a dimension text style so that your dimensions will be controlled by that text style. You can set the color here, by layer or by block, or you can make it magenta if you'd like. You can set up a fill color. Now the fill color puts a area behind the text. As you can see here, this makes it a little bit hard to read, but you can also use a background. Now the background is kind of cool, because what that does, it just blends in the background color, which is typically going to be like a white or a black. When you print out your drawing, it will match the background of the physical paper that you're on. Well, how does it do that? Well, it just doesn't print anything in that area. So that's cool because if you have line work underneath your text and your dimension, it will block out the line work and show only the text, clearing it up and keeping you from having to trim lines or mess around with your dimensions so you can see them. So that's something you may want to consider doing almost every time. You can set the text height or the text height can be controlled by the text style, whatever you want to do. You can put a frame around it or not. You can align everything you know, horizontally or with a dimension. You can center it. You can put it over an extension line. You can do a lot of different things. You'll just have to play with these settings until it comes out the way you want it to look. Now the other one you're going to want to look at will be the primary units. This is very important because your dimensions will show somebody how big or how large that your item is that you're creating. You have the same type of settings that you do in your unit settings for your file. Now these typically need to match, but it's up to you. You can do it however you need to. You can make them architectural and you can change your precision and how precise your dimensions are going to be. You can change your fractional stacking you can add a prefix, I'll put in my initials. You can add a suffix, and it will have for architectural, you know, a feet or inches, or if you're using decimal specifically, you're probably gonna to wanna to set this in if you're measuring in feet, or if you're dimensioning in millimeters, you wanna set it to millimeters. When you make changes to your dimension style, and you've used that dimension style in your drawing, then those dimension styles will automatically be updated once you change their style. Now that's pretty cool because then you can make quick changes to your entire drawing quickly. You can also use the match properties, type in MA, 
and pick your source and then pick the target. And those styles will be applied to those other dimensions.